Hello my YouTube friends, this is Dan from youtube.com forward slash let's attempt and your eyes do not deceive you, that is the King's Quest logo. Um, so if you're anything like me and, and play games through the late 80s, uh, early to late 90s and obviously through to now, um, this game, especially if you've ever played on a PC, was a must play. Uh, so Sierra, the um, I suppose creators of this game, um, Roberta Williams specifically, um, uh, made this King's Quest game. It went through to uh, up to seven, I think, and probably more uh, from memory. Back in the old EGA days uh, of the, the 286 and 386 generation computers there, uh, just for a walk down memory lane. So this has been uh, revamped, remastered, or retold. Uh, this is King's Quest 1. Uh, uh, Reimagining of it is probably the best way to describe it. Um, so let me tell you, I am really, really excited um, to play this. Uh, just as a little hint, uh, or a sneaky one, I have actually gone through and played it before. So if it looks like I know what I'm doing, uh, well, it means I probably do. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's take a look at King's Quest. So the interface looks pretty simple to use. Um, Square, uh, as we're playing on the PS4, is for our backpack, um, depending on the action available. So we've got a hand there, which I'm guessing is obviously use, uh, and an eye, which is to look. So what we'll do is we'll take a look down the well first. Alrighty, so the next logical choice is to um, wind it down. So as I mentioned in the introduction, I have played this through already, so I'm actually going to play I it through this time with some different choices. Years, but it was the last place left to look. So we've got some narration happening there, so uh, for those of you guys with a keen ear, that is actually Christopher Lloyd um, giving us some narration, which is great. It does a really good job of keeping the story sort of engaging, which is excellent. I think the voice acting in this is quite superb. It was not exactly as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. Beautiful scenery in the background there. Really nice mix up of like yes, yeah, shell shaded, sorry, cell shaded uh, graphics and just a little bit of um, special effects over the top there with the mist. I think that looks quite cool. Two odd contraptions guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. Let's see what happens when we turn this one. Oh. And that's what would have happened if I turned the left switch. But since I am here telling this story, you already know that I pulled the right one. 
<laughs> okay, so um, I'll know not to do that one again. So right switch it is. happening up here. Hand icon. Even though the bed was very comfortable, this was no time to hide under the covers. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? We'll get there, Gwendolyn. Don't worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. <laughs> As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Mm. Ben's looking a bit dubious. Nestle. Beneath a slumbering pile of teeth and claws was... Fabled Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. Do you want to tell this part? Yes! King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to add a shinier hat to my collection. <laughs> I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. <laughs> I feel so giddy like I'm back in the, the 90s playing this on the computer. Um, obviously it's got a tremendous facelift graphics wise and got some voice acting in there too but um, in essence it's still got the same charm. Volumes of old books with foreboding titles clutter the shelves of that strange bedroom. How to tame a dragon, breaking the spirit of hideous beasts. Amateur spells to impress your friends with. <laughs> no books about covering <laughs> missing handles, though. Seems like a handle. So, the missing handle was booby trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. <laughs> Then I use my oh, cleverness shit. to hide. Luckily, that half-blinded beast I... never noticed me in bed. A dragon's eye must be really hard to pierce with an arrow. At archery lessons, I can barely hit a hay bale. It is indeed a, a feat only for skilled archers. <laughs> what did you use to fix the broken switch? A wooden handle. Dragon's chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall. Quietly. 
After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day, too, if Amira was my only friend. Ooh, okay. Bit of platforming here to um, work around by the looks. Tread a bit more carefully, I think. I'll go around these things. Oh, why does that be so loud? left and see what's up here. Something tells me going straight is probably not going to be a good payoff. Oh no, now my ladder! Inside this trap, thought they were pretty clever, but I would probably find a way to hit that unreachable switch. Exploring. Oh, okay. The mirror called out. Oh, so got a bit of a bit of a puzzle happening here, so we'll see what happens. The bell, firstly. A ridiculous contraption was cobbled together to keep the beast and probably its owner alive. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I think I'll see what's happening. So I'll ring the bell. Wake his ass up. Hmm. 
I'll give this another spin and see what happens. I should move that to another area. side. Yoink. And this is um, really reminds me of the old games as well. With the magic mirror safely in my possession, I dreamt of the daventry I would be rewarded with, and the kingdom it could become. in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety and all would have rippling consequences.
hands were shaking and my arms could barely grip the rope. But with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. I hope this old cap will be remembered for far more than the action tattered across its brim, sewn into the seams of many hidden adventures. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like, why did you set the dragon free even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home, but only to my stuffed bunnies. I've always found it best to pursue friends where I can, though they don't always feel the same about me. All right, you two. Grandpa needs to rest. <laughs> Gwendolyn, it's way past your bedtime. Sleep well, Grandpa. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I don't need rest. I'm as spry as I've ever been, though I would mind a slice of magic fruit. Hello, cousin. Guard! <laughs> I'm glad you're finally here. He's been asking about you for days. I had to sit through the same story five times. We got here as fast as we could. And I like Grandpa stories, especially the ones with dragons. Ah, oh, yes, the legendary beast that he set free. I don't know if he forgets I've heard that story before or he doesn't care, but he loves telling it to anyone that will listen. I'm pretty sure I heard the nursemaids telling his same jokes in the hall. Have you heard anything the doctors are saying? Yes. Doctors, wizards, magic elves. Grandfather is fine, Gwendolyn. They all say the same thing. He's just old. He still has a few good years left. Look, we're all excited that your family made the trip, but there's no need to worry. You should get some rest. I'm sure you're scheduled for a full morning of Grandfather's hilarious ramblings. Oh, I'm also scheduled for the tournament tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes, the fencing tournament. You'll love it. I'm, of course, favored to win, and will make sure you have the very best seat to view my victory. The courtyard will be filled with important people and delicious hors d'oeuvres. Oh, um, I'm actually competing in the tournament. Hmm. I had no idea we were hosting a junior tournament. That's incredible. In that case, I will gladly be there to cheer you on and eat delectable appetizers. Nope. No junior tournament. I'll be squaring off against you. I see. Well, perhaps this is the time to stop listening to stories and finally make some of your own. Good night, Gwendolyn. Sleep well. Come in, Gwendolyn. You can set those on the nightstand. 
Grandma said to take three spoonfuls of each. I'll get to those. No need to fuss over me. Now, let's talk about far more important issues, like that fencing tournament. I hear you're competing. Well, I signed up, but I'm not so sure anymore. Nonsense. If it's Scott you're worried about, he's no bother. After all, I only learned that you entered after he complained about it all morning. Threatened, I'm guessing. There are many ways to win a duel. I, for one, have always been fond of... Treating my opponents with respect. You'll be surprised what opens up to you. A lovely fellow once told me the fastest way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. <clears throat> Speaking of, that reminds me of a story. One I know you haven't heard before. When I was a much younger lad, before I was a knight, before I'd been to Daventry, and even before I'd seen a dragon. It's a tale about a tournament that changed my life. It is a long story, but I shall tell it briefly. Well, Triumph, this looks as good a place as any to camp for the night. Let's rest up. We have a big day tomorrow. After gracefully repelling down the cliff, I welcome the sight of an actual road, the first sign of civilization. Alrighty guys, so that will probably wrap it up for um, video one of King's Quest. It is a bit of a shorter one, but we're going to get into the, the main story here. And when we come back, we'll see exactly what's on this sign. And I must say, this is a side note. This with Christopher Lloyd uh, narrating this, I could listen to him talk all day. Um, he's brilliant voice acting um, by him. Even um, uh, his granddaughter there that you heard was um, was not too bad as well. And we'll get to see a little bit more of Graham as a, as a young fellow here. His voice actor is pretty cool also. Uh, anyway, uh, enough of my uh, regressing to teenagehood. Uh, we're going to stop here. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, I encourage you to keep watching because um, if you have played this game back in the 90s, it is a very welcome trip down memory lane, how they've captured the whole essence of King's Quest. I think it's excellent. Uh, and for those of you who haven't, uh, or uh, I suppose a little bit younger, and haven't had the privilege of playing the old... Um, Firstly, the command-driven King's Quest games on the um, PC, moving into the point and clicks. Um, stick around as well because it's a be a good sort of um, education, maybe is, is a good word. Um, it's a really fine example of how video games can uh, not really have to resort to to violence and uh, sex and all that kind of thing to have an appeal. So it, it's good. Anyway, stick around for next video. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you then.